The electricity sector of the United States includes a large array of stakeholders that provide services through electricity generation, transmission, distribution and marketing for industrial, commercial, public and residential customers. It also includes many public institutions that regulate the sector. In 1996, there were 3,195 electric utilities in the United States, of which fewer than 1,000 were engaged in power generation. This leaves a large number of mostly smaller utilities engaged only in power distribution. There were also 65 power marketers. Of all utilities, 2,020 were publicly owned including 10 federal utilities, 932 were rural electric cooperatives, and 243 were investor-owned utilities. The electricity transmission network is controlled by independent system operators or regional transmission organizations, which are not-for-profit organizations that are obliged to provide indiscriminate access to various suppliers in order to promote competition. The four above-mentioned market segments of the U.S. electricity sector are regulated by different public institutions with some functional overlaps. The federal government sets general policies through the Department of Energy, environmental policy through the Environmental Protection Agency and consumer protection policy through the Federal Trade Commission. The safety of nuclear power plants is overseen by the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. Economic regulation of the distribution segment is a state responsibility, usually carried out through public utilities commissions. The interstate transmission segment is regulated by the federal government through the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission. Principal sources of U.S. electricity in 2014 were, coal 39%, natural gas 27%, nuclear 19%, hydro 6%, and other renewables 7%. Over the decade 2004, 2014, the largest increases in electrical generation came from natural gas 2014 generation was 412 billion kilowatt-hours greater than 2004, wind increase of 168 billion kilowatt-hours and solar increased 18 billion kilowatt-hours. Over the same decade, annual generation from coal decreased 393 billion kilowatt-hours, and from petroleum decreased 90 billion kilowatt-hours. In 2008, the average electricity tariff in the U.S. was 9.82 cents kilowatt-hour (kWh). In 2006–07 electricity tariffs in the US were higher than in Australia, Canada, France, Sweden and Finland, but lower than in Germany, Italy, Spain, and the UK. Residential tariffs vary significantly between states from 6.7 cents per kWh in West Virginia to 24.1 cents per kWh in Hawaii. The average residential bill in 2007 was $100 per month. Most investments in the U.S. electricity sector are financed by private companies through debt and equity. However, some investments are indirectly financed by taxpayers through various subsidies ranging from tax incentives to subsidies for research and development, feed-in tariffs for renewable energy and support to low-income households to pay their electric bills.
Topic: <laughs> Electricity consumption. Electricity consumption data in this section is based upon data mined from U.S. DOE Energy Information Administration, Electric Power Annual 2016 files In 2016 the total U.S. consumption of electricity was 4,137.1 TWh Consumption was essentially flat from 2015, with a 6 TWh or 0.15% drop. This is broken down as Residential customers 131.07 million directly consumed 1,411.1 terawatt hours, or 34.11% of the total. This was up 7 terawatt hours from 2015. An average residential customer used 897.2 kWh per month and with the average U.S. residential cost of $0.1255 per kWh the average monthly electrical bill would be $112.59, down slightly from 2015. Commercial customers 18.148 million directly consumed 1,367.2 terawatt hours or 33.05% of the total. This was just a little more 6.44 terawatt hours than in 2015. An average commercial customer used 6,278 kWh per month and with the average U.S. commercial electric cost of $0.1043 per kWh the average monthly electrical bill would be $654.78, down slightly from 2015. Industrial customers about 838,100 directly consumed 976.7 terawatt hours or 23.61% of the total. This was a little less than in 2015 minus 1.0% Transportation customers 86 directly consumed 7.50 terawatt hours or 0.18% of the total. This was a little lower 0.14 terawatt hours than in 2015. System loss throughout the total electrical grid infrastructure by direct use of the suppliers 139.8 terawatt hours and for transmission and other system losses and for unaccounted for loads 234.8 terawatt hours amounts to 374.6 terawatt hours or 9.1% of the total which is down by 0.2% from 2015. Thus, the U.S. electric distribution system is 90.94% efficient and efficiency has improved over the last year. Electricity consumption per person per capita is based upon data mined from U.S. DOE Energy Information Administration, Electric Power Annual 2016 files population data is from demographics of the United States. Per capita consumption in 2016 is 12,861 kWh. This is down 54 kWh from 2015 and down 6.3% from a decade ago and down 8.0% from its peak in 2007. The following table shows the yearly U.S. per capita consumption by fuel source from 1999 to 2016. Gas includes natural gas and other gases. 
Solar includes photovoltaics and thermal and includes small-scale solar. MISC includes MISC generation, pumped storage, and net imports. Bio-other includes waste, landfill gas, and other. Hydro excludes pumped storage not an energy source, used by all sources, other than hydro. Total includes net imports and calculated small-scale solar. Electricity generation In 2016 the total installed electricity generation summer capacity, in the United States was 1,074.3 GW, up 10.2 GW from 2015. The main energy sources for electricity generation include Thermal, fossil 750.18 GW down 8.27 GW from 2015 Nuclear 99.6 GW up 0.9 GW from 2015 Hydropower 79.9 GW up 0.2 GW from 2015 Wind 81.3 GW up 8.7 GW from 2015 Actual USA electricity generation in 2016 was 4076.8 TWh TWh and was down 0.8 TWh from 2015. The USA also imported 69.60 terawatt hours and exported 9.33 terawatt hours, making a total of 4,137.1 terawatt hours for consumption, down 7.2 terawatt hours from 2015. Electricity generation was primarily from the following sources. Thermal, fossil 2,654.5 TWh down 72.5 TWh from 2015 Nuclear 805.7 TWh up 8.7 TWh from 2015 Hydropower 267.8 terawatt hours up 18.8 terawatt hours from 2015. Wind 227.0 terawatt hours up 36.3 terawatt hours from 2015. Other renewables 114.6 terawatt hours including wood, landfill gas, geothermal energy and solar up 10.1 terawatt hours from 2015 the share of coal and nuclear in power generation is much higher than their share in installed capacity because coal and nuclear plants provide base load and thus are running longer hours than natural gas and petroleum plants which typically provide peak load, while wind turbines and solar plants produce electricity when they can and natural gas fills in as required to compensate. Gas includes natural gas and other gases. Solar includes photovoltaics and thermal. MISC includes MISC generation, pumped storage, and net imports. Bio-other includes waste, landfill gas, and other. Hydro excludes pumped storage not an energy source, used by all sources, other than hydro. Total includes net imports. 2017 data is from Electric Power Monthly and does not include import export data. The following table summarizes the electrical energy generated by fuel sources for the USA.
Data was mined from Electric Power Annual 2016. Profile data is from Electric Power Monthly and is for 2016. Topic: <laughs> Coal and Gas. Fossil fuels, mainly coal and natural gas, remain the backbone of electricity generation in the U.S., accounting for 68% of installed generation capacity in 2010. In 2007 the Department of Energy estimated the planned additional capacity for 2008-12 at 92 gigawatts, most of which to be fueled by natural gas 48 gigawatts and coal 19 gigawatts. <laughs> Nuclear power As of 2007 in the United States, there are 104 commercial nuclear reactors in the U.S., generating approximately 20% of the nation's total electric energy consumption. For many years, no new nuclear plants have been built in the U.S. However, since 2005 there has been a renewed interest in nuclear power in the U.S. This has been facilitated in part by the federal government with the Nuclear Power 2010 program of 2002, and the Energy Policy Act. As of March 9, 2009, the U.S. Nuclear Regulatory Commission had received applications for permission to construct 26 new nuclear power reactors however, as of 2013 most of the new applications had been abandoned due to the low cost of electricity generated with natural gas which had become available at cheap prices due to the boom in hydraulic fracture electricity produced using natural gas being 4 cents a kilowatt hour versus 10 cents, or more, for nuclear. <inaudible> Renewable energy The following table summarizes the electrical energy generated by renewable fuel sources for the U.S. Data was obtained from Electric Power Annual 2016. Note, biomass includes wood and wood-derived fuel, landfill gas, biogenic municipal solid waste and other waste biomass. The development of renewable energy and energy efficiency marks a new era of energy exploration. In the United States, according to President Barack Obama, in a joint address to the Congress on February 24, 2009, President Obama called for doubling renewable energy within the next three years. From the end of 2008 to the end of 2011 renewable energy increased by 35% and from the end of 2008 till the end of 2014, 41.4%. Renewable energy accounted for more than 14.9% of the domestically produced electric energy used in the United States in 2016, up from 8.82% in 2005. In the past 10 years, wind production has increased by 900% 10x and now provides over 5.49% of U.S. electric requirements. Over this same time period solar has increased by 4,400% 45x and now provides 0.87% of U.S. electric energy needs. According to a report by the Interior Department, U.S. wind power, including offshore turbines, could more than meet U.S. electricity needs. 
The Department of Energy has said wind power could generate 20% of U.S. electricity by 2030. Several solar thermal power stations, including the new 64 MW Nevada Solar One, have also been built. The largest of these solar thermal power stations is the SEGS group of plants in the Mojave Desert with a total generating capacity of 354 megawatts, making the system the largest solar plant of any kind in the world. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Energy efficiency and conservation. The federal government promotes energy efficiency through the Energy Star program. The Alliance to Save Energy, an industry group, also promotes energy efficiency. Topic: <laughs> Responsibilities in the electricity sector. Topic: Policy and regulation. Policy for the electricity sector in the United States is set by the executive and legislative bodies of the federal government and state governments. Within the executive branch of the federal government, the Department of Energy plays a key role. In addition, the Environmental Protection Agency is in charge of environmental regulation and the Federal Trade Commission is in charge of consumer protection and the prevention of anti-competitive practices. Key federal legislation related to the electricity sector includes the Federal Power Act of 1935 that promoted hydropower and increased the role of the federal government in the sector. The National Energy Act of 1978, including the Public Utility Regulatory Policies Act which required utilities to provide residential consumers with energy conservation audits and other services to encourage slower growth of electricity demand, and was intended to promote renewable energy with the result of promoting mainly co-generation. The Energy Policy Act of 1992 which provided further incentives for energy efficiency and removed obstacles to wholesale competition, and The Energy Independence and Security Act of 2007 which phased out incandescent light bulbs. Many state governments have been active in promoting renewable energy. For example, in 2007 25 states and the District of Columbia had established Renewable Portfolio Standards RPS. There is no federal policy on RPS. The Federal Energy Regulatory Commission is in charge of regulating interstate electricity sales, wholesale electric rates, and licensing hydropower plants. Rates for electricity distribution are regulated by state-level public utilities commissions or public services commissions. Topic: Deregulation and competition. Deregulation of the electricity sector consists in the introduction of competition and the unbundling of vertically integrated utilities in separate entities in charge of electricity generation, electricity transmission, electricity distribution, and commercialization. The deregulation of the electricity sector in the U.S. began with the Energy Policy Act of 1992 which removed obstacles for wholesale competition. 
In practice, however, regulation has been unevenly introduced between states. It began in earnest only from 1996 onwards when the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission issued orders that required utilities to provide transmission services on a reasonable and non-discriminatory basis. In some states, such as in California, private utilities were required to sell some of their power plants to prevent concentration of market power. As of April 2014, 16 U.S. states Connecticut, Delaware, Illinois, Maine, Maryland, Massachusetts, Michigan, Montana, New Hampshire, New Jersey, New York, Ohio, Oregon, Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania, Rhode Island, and Texas and the District of Columbia have deregulated their electricity markets in some capacity. Additionally, seven states, Arizona, Arkansas, California, Nevada, New Mexico, Virginia, and Wyoming, started electricity deregulation in some capacity but have since suspended deregulation. The deregulation of the Texas electricity market in 2002 is one of the better known examples. The result has been that the different states within United States have a wide spectrum of different levels of deregulation. Some states only allow large commercial customers to choose a different supplier, some allow all consumers to choose. Contrary to the largely similar methods of deregulation for natural gas, different states have taken very different approaches to electricity deregulation. <laughs> <laughs> Service provision Electric utilities in the U.S. can be both in charge of electricity generation and electricity distribution. The electricity transmission network is not owned by individual utilities, but by companies and organizations that are obliged to provide indiscriminate access to various suppliers in order to promote competition. In 1996, there were 3,195 electric utilities in the United States and 65 power marketers. Of these, 2,020 were publicly owned including 10 federal utilities, 932 were rural electric cooperatives, and 243 were investor-owned utilities. Fewer than 1,000 utilities are engaged in power generation. <inaudible> generation About 80% of the electricity in the U.S. is generated by private, investor-owned, utilities. The remaining electricity is produced by the public sector. This includes federal agencies such as the Tennessee Valley Authority producing mainly nuclear and hydropower, and power marketing administrations of the Department of Energy, one of which is the Bonneville Power Administration in the Pacific Northwest hydropower. It also includes municipal utilities and utility cooperatives. The largest private electric producers in the United States include AES Corporation Southern Company, 42 gigawatts American Electric Power, 38 gigawatts Duke Energy, 58 2 gigawatts Luminant 18 gigawatts Reliant Energy 14 gigawatts Pacific Gas and Electric Company Allegheny Energy 
Topic: Transmission. There are two major alternating current AC power grids in North America, the Eastern Interconnection and the Western Interconnection. Besides this there are two minor power grids in the U.S., the Alaska Interconnection and the Texas Interconnection. The Eastern, Western and Texas interconnections are tied together at various points with DC interconnects allowing electrical power to be transmitted throughout the contiguous US, Canada and parts of Mexico. The transmission grids are operated by Transmission System Operators (TSOs), not-for-profit companies that are typically owned by the utilities in their respective service area, where they coordinate, control and monitor the operation of the electrical power system. TSOs are obliged to provide non-discriminatory transmission access to electricity generators and customers. TSOs can be of two types, independent system operators ISOs and regional transmission organizations RTOs. The former operates within a single state and the latter covers wider areas crossing state borders. In 2009, there were four RTOs in the US. ISO New England, ISO -E, which is an RTO despite its name. Midcontinent Independent System Operator. PJM interconnection in the Mid-Atlantic region, and Southwest Power Pool SPP covering Oklahoma, Kansas and parts of Arkansas, Missouri, Texas and New Mexico. There are also three ISOs. California Independent System Operator California ISO New York Independent System Operator NYISO Electric Reliability Council of Texas ERCOT and ISO RTOs are similar but not identical to the nine regional reliability councils associated in the North American Electric Reliability Corporation (NERC), a non-profit entity that is in charge of improving the reliability and security of the bulk power system in the US, Canada and the northern part of Baja California in Mexico. The members of the regional reliability councils include private, public and cooperative utilities, power marketers and final customers. The regional reliability councils are Eastern Interconnection Florida Reliability Coordinating Council FRCC Midwest Reliability Organization MRO Northeast Power Coordinating Council NPCC Reliability First Corporation RFC CERC Reliability Corporation CERC Southwest Power Pool SPP Western Interconnection Western Electricity Coordinating Council WECC Texas Interconnection Electric Reliability Council of Texas ERCOT The FERC distinguishes between 10 power markets in the US including the 7 for which RTOs have been established well as Northwest Southwest covering Arizona, most of New Mexico and Colorado. Southeast ISOs and RTOs were established in the 1990s when states and regions established wholesale competition for electricity. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Distribution. 
About 75% of electricity sales to final customers are undertaken by private utilities, with the remainder being sold by municipal utilities and cooperatives. Economic and financial aspects Topic: Tariffs and affordability In 2008 the average electricity tariff in the U.S. was 9.82 cents per kWh, up from 6.9 cents per kWh in 1995. Residential tariffs were somewhat higher at 11.36 cents per kilowatt hour, while commercial tariffs stood at 10.28 cents per kilowatt hour and industrial tariffs at 7.01 cents per kilowatt hour. The cost of supplying high voltage power to high volume industrial customers is lower than the cost of providing low voltage 110 volts power to residential and commercial customers. In 2006-07 commercial electricity tariffs in the US 9.28 cents per kilowatt hour were higher than in Australia 7.1 cents per kilowatt hour Canada 6.18 cents per kilowatt hour that relies mainly on hydropower or in France 8.54 cents per kilowatt hour that relies heavily on nuclear power but lower than in Germany 13.16 cents per kilowatt hour Italy 15.74 cents per kilowatt hour or the UK 11.16 cents per kilowatt hour that all rely to a larger degree on fossil fuels all compared at purchasing power parity residential tariffs vary significantly between states from 6.7 cents per kilowatt hour in West Virginia to 24.1 cents per kilowatt hour in Hawaii. An important factor that influences tariff levels is the mix of energy sources used in power generation. For example, access to cheap federal power from hydropower plants contributes to low electricity tariffs in some states. Average residential electricity consumption in the U.S. was 936 kilowatt hours per month per in 2007, and the average bill was $100 per month. Average residential consumption varies considerably between states from 530 kilowatt hours per month in Maine to 1344 kilowatt hours per month in Tennessee. Factors that influence residential energy consumption are climate, tariffs and efforts to promote energy conservation. Topic Revenues Total revenue from the sale of electricity in 2008 was $344 billion, including $148 billion from residential customers, $129 billion from commercial customers and $66 billion from industrial customers. Many large industries self-generate electricity and their electricity consumption thus is not included in these figures. Investment Financing Most investments in the U.S. electricity sector are financed by private companies through debt and equity. 
However, some investments are indirectly financed by taxpayers through various subsidies. Topic: <inaudible> Subsidies and tax incentives. There is a large array of subsidies in the U.S. electricity sector ranging from various forms of tax incentives to subsidies for research and development, feed-in tariffs for renewable energy and support to low-income households to pay their electric bills. Some subsidies are available throughout the U.S., while others are only available in some states. Tax incentives include federal and state tax deductions and tax breaks. Tax incentives can be directed at consumers, such as for the purchase of energy-efficient appliances or for solar energy systems, small wind systems, geothermal heat pumps, and residential fuel cell and microturbine systems. Tax incentives can also be directed at electricity producers, in particular for renewable energy. The Low Income Home Energy Assistance Program received federal funding of $5.1 billion in fiscal year 2009. It is funded mainly by the federal government through the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Administration for Children and Families, and is administered by states and territories. While some of its funding is for fuel for heating, some is also used to cover electricity bills for both heating and cooling. In April, 2009, 11 U.S. state legislatures were considering adopting feed-in tariffs as a complement to their renewable electricity mandates. See also Energy in the United States Energy policy of the United States California electricity crisis 2001 Northeast blackout of 2003 Energy Information Administration List of largest power stations in the United States